right, we are live. What's going on, everybody? You mighty smart guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from the Mille Miglia Mercedes-Benz Whip. Thankfully, because of this gentleman right here, this is Patrick Bet David in the house. Uh, hey, hey. <laughs> what city are we in, by the way? Right now, this is called the Golden Coast. This is called Gold Coast. Gold Coast. Gold Coast. Chicago. Yep. Yeah. We're passing up, uh, for those of you guys in Chicago, this is uh, Viagra, Viagra Triangle, for those of you in Chicago know what this is. Patrick doesn't, has no clue, but we just had lunch here on Tavern on Rush. But uh, I'm assuming that means the Viagra headquarters <laughs> is here, or the most business they get for Viagra is here. That's one right. of the two. The most amount of prescriptions that makes sold sense. in one so per, per capita. A, so it's a hardcore area here. Right. Okay. Absolutely. And so we are... Oops. This young lady here. So, as you guys know, this is Chicago. Everybody walks where they want, drives where they want. We just got to maneuver. So uh, we we've got an exciting weekend ahead. Very very exciting weekend ahead. Um, actually, right now we're uh, uh, Patrick just flew in from Dallas. Surprised me because I didn't think we we're coming in until tomorrow. Patrick sends me a text. Where you at? <laughs> uh, numbers wise, we are no no physically where you at. <laughs> But um, we're on our way right now to have some cigars with a uh, former NBA basketball, basketball player, uh, Antoine Walker. For those of you who follow us on Snapchat, you will, you will definitely, let's get around this bus right here. For those of you who follow us on Snapchat, you'll find out what we're doing, how we're doing it. Um, and the people are having a cigar with him here in a minute. Patrick, you just, I don't know if we can share this, but... Uh, would you care to share? Uh, we just had a... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, so yeah. I was okay. with uh, um, Sean Conlon right now. If you don't know who Sean Conlon is, he's got a show on CNBC called The Deep, um, where Sean Conlon uh, was an uh, immigrant from Ireland, Irish immigrant, came here in 1990 and got into uh, real estate. And next thing you know, he takes his business from zero to doing $200 million dollars of condos every year True. in Chicago. He was the number one guy. Wow. And then he built this real estate company. Now they do a billion dollars of business every year. So I had a chance to spend some time with him at his place. And then we got lunch and then some gelato. And then now off to meeting with Antoine Walker. Antoine Walker, that's it. So uh, <clears throat> for those of you tuning in, thanks for peeping in. And and uh, for those of you, there's going to be an Oak Brook tomorrow. It's going to be a blast. Make sure you share this with your uh, with your uh, social media profiles. Let everybody know that Patrick Bet David is in the house. Big surprise. And um, uh, Patrick, we were talking about over lunch. Yeah. You know, we're we're uh, we're discussing your uh, anniversary. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was asking you, Patrick. You know, just I'm I'm just out of I'm just curious, how many people in your wedding picture that came to your wedding during some of the, during the biggest moment of your new union between you and Jennifer are still in your life? Ask that question. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, it's, uh, um, it's, it's, it's very, very few, very, very few. And it, it's not a, it's not a good or bad thing. It's just people come and go sometimes in your life. And it goes back to the same story of my dad telling me that if by the end of the day you can find a handful of friends that you can be friends with for the rest of your life, you are extremely lucky. Um, but yeah, most of them are not around. Most of them are not around from the wedding day. Wow. And, um, and I look at photos of teams that we've built over the years, um, uh, a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, and it's sad. Are we on MSM Group? Are we on pro, uh, public? public? This is public. Okay, got uh, it. Yeah. Is everybody, yeah. So the teams you built over the years. You're right. Teams over the years. There, there's people in that picture and no longer in the picture. And and, and you know, right or wrong, I, I, people got in business for you for a reason, to make an impact, make money. And the irony behind that, though, is a lot of them their financial lives has still not improved. Yep. And so I'm just not thinking it happens to me, but looking at your wedding picture. It's happened to the CEO founder of PHP Agency, yep. even to you, Patrick. Yeah, so, you know, it, it, it's a couple things. I mean, it, this is what we were talking about during lunch when he said, what do you think is the number one reason why people give up? You know, sometimes you hear belief, but I think past the belief part is 
Yeah, so here's the guy, immigrant. He's, I said, so how did you go from what you did to, you know... Sean Conlon. Sean Conlon. Yeah. How did you go from zero to doing 200 million in a, in a year? He says, look, I worked 100 hours every week for six years straight is what I did. Wow. He started part-time in real estate. He had a full-time job as an assistant janitor. He was the assistant to the main <laughs> janitor is what he did. Wow. Talking about working for the bottom, huh? Yep. He worked from 8 o'clock to 6. He said from 6 at night on, I was selling. I was going out there. He says on Saturdays and Sundays, I didn't work. He says on Saturdays and Sundays, I worked from 8 in the morning till 10 at night every day until I quit my part-time job. For the first six months, he did not sell a single real estate property the first six months. Wow. He says he's about to give up. He's about to quit. His family's not here. Everybody's back in Ireland. And next thing you know, he... Um, he makes it work. He sells his first property, uh, $22,000. And then from there it takes off. And uh, he condensed time frames. I think sometimes if you take the same amount of hours, so think about it this way. Mm -hmm. If I work 40 hours a week, right. every week, that's 200 hours a week. Okay. And the 40, 40 hours a week, every month is 160. If I work 40 hours a week for entire year, that's 2,000 hours. If I do that for 10 years, that's 20,000 hours. Okay. So essentially in a 10 year period, I'm working 20,000 hours, basic math. If a guy works 100 hours a week, times right. 50 Time. weeks, that's 5,000 hours in a week. He does in four years what the other guy does in, in 10. 10 years. Right. So you're gonna work your 20 hours anyways in a 10 year period. Why not do it in a five year period? Just collapse it. Can do it in a four year period, collapse it. So you take your business to a whole different level. So the point goes back to the fact that not only do most people don't believe they can do it, more importantly, few people are willing to do the work. Right. So people realize the work that it requires and they say, no, I just don't want to do it. Right. I just don't want to deal with it. And unfortunately, those who do do the work end up generally being disliked by people who don't do the work. There's a certain right. level of... Their, their friends and family. Yeah, of course. That, right. I mean, what are the seven deadly sins? You know, the most annoying part about the seven deadly sins. What is the least rewarding sin out of the seven deadly sins? You don't get any reward from it. Everything else, there is a reward. Everything else feels good at least. One of them, permanently pain, and that's envy. And uh, wow. envy is the only one out of the seven deadly sins that it lasts a long time, it lingers, and it's not fun. And so, wow. that's why the few who decide to do it, you know, you're part of an association of other people that are also doing it. You have nothing to be envious about. You're giving in everything you've got as well. So, so back to your point, Patrick, the reason why people fall out of business yeah. is because not necessarily belief, but simply because they're not putting in the work. Oh, I guarantee you everybody watching this right now, they know, they know business works. People know business works. You guys know it works? I guarantee yeah. everybody knows business works. You can you you watching this right now, you cannot tell me you don't believe business works. Just look behind the camera right there. Can you see? Look, uh, that's a building. That's business. I that's another Rolls Royce behind us. That's a Rolls behind us. That's a Phantom behind us. $350,000 car. Everything around us, this is a business. Okay? This is a business. This keychain thing is a business. The person that makes this key is a business. This is a business, shirt is a business, everything here is a business. Business works. Patrick, can I use your power? Yeah, of course. Yep. Business works, but... Yeah, old, look at that big old fan. All right, let's go here, buddy. Yeah, that's thanks, nice. Thanks, one. PBD. You got it, buddy. All right. So, I, I'm just curious. Do you guys have questions for Patrick about work ethic? If you, you do have questions for Patrick, drop it in the comments. But I wanted to ask you a question, um, which is the topic of this video. What's the relationship that somebody should not take for granted? What's one relationship in somebody's life? If they want to get ahead, build a business, get to the next level, what's one relationship that they shouldn't burn, that they shouldn't take for granted, that they should cultivate over time? Man, it's very simple, man. Anytime, if you find yourself working with somebody who is a big thinker, never take that relationship for granted. There, is, there are two different types of people. There are those who act and, and talk big, and then there are those who think big. The difference is those who act and talk big, they don't prove that what they're thinking is becoming a reality. They're generally here, they just stay flat. 
the way you know who thinks big is they're constantly advancing at a faster pace than everybody else and they're not slowing down so the vision is much bigger than just let me make a lot of money and do this. It's, it's, a, it's a vision that is not just tied to money. Money is so easy to make. You know, yesterday we had entrepreneurs from all over the world come to, from Valuetainment, from Romania, from India. Two people from India flew 19 and a half hours just to wow. come to spend three hours with us. And I... You know what's crazy, oh, what's crazy about that, Patrick? Yeah. That was, that was a contest you did for Valuetainment yep. to celebrate 250,000 subscribers. Yep. Where are you at right now in Valuetainment subscribers? I think we're at 326, 326,000. <laughs> and we just hit quarter million like last month. 326 or something. But the oh, point being, Groupon is over there. Here, that's Groupon right Groupon there. Yeah. Groupon almost was bought out for $6 billion. And he said, no. Yeah. Now nobody wants to buy Groupon. Nobody. So, you know, don't take the big thinking relationships for granted. Anybody's around you, they, they make you feel a little bit uncomfortable when you're around them because you feel like their standards are higher than yours and they think bigger than yours. If you can handle the pressure of being around somebody like that, fortunately, eventually, you're going to be like that to other people. Um, everything you see around the world that's big that we talk about, we read about, was typically built and led by a group of big thinkers, period. Um, the more big thinking, relate, like right now, even after Sean and I were done talking, Sean afterwards, like, hey, you got to come to my Malibu house. I want to spend more time, more business with you, more wow. time with you, and do some business with you. He says, I looked your entire thing up. I researched you. I found out who you were. And initially, we were just going to do the interview in another place, but he brought us to his house. It's a $15 million place. We went to his nice place. He's shown paintings he has from Rembrandt, all these million dollar paintings he has upstairs in his room. And um, wow, these are big thinking Huge. relationships you don't want to take for granted. And how do you know you're around a big thinker, Patrick? They consistently paint the bigger picture on what's going to happen next. And they consistently stretch what used to be big six months ago today. So what was a big deal six months ago is no longer a big deal to them today. <laughs> I mean, you think about all of us at one point, we were 14 years old. At 14 years old, you know, $5 may have been a lot of money, $100 may have been a lot of money, $200 may have been a lot of money. By 18, maybe we say, I'd love to make $1,000 a month so I can have a nice car and have a cell phone. You know, by 22, we want to make three grand a month so if we have our own place and a nice car and we can go have some fun. You know, yeah. by 30, we want to make six grand a month so we can, you know, maybe buy a house and drive a nicer car. And then by 35, 40, we want to make six figures. Most people just stop right there, and then there is not a next level. Right. Well, that's been my relationship with you. When Sheen and I came here in January 2015 with with PHP Agency, you know, we we're we we're looking for somebody to trust. We're looking for somebody to to uh, buckle down and and just get to work. And uh, I remember you were having conversations with Sheena. You know, and Sheena, you was, you're going to start making ten thousand, twenty thousand a month. You're gonna start making forty thousand a month, and and uh, you were telling her you're, you're gonna you're gonna be very happy here, Sheena. And uh, we, we got. That was work. her initial reaction when I would say oh, that. She, she wouldn't believe it. Yeah, she, oh, yeah, just, yeah, really. And uh, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, that's what we want, baby. <laughs> and, and it's funny how opposites attract. I'm thinking one way, she's thinking another. And uh, next thing you know, that's like the norm. You know, and then we started making 50000 and and um, I think our greatest cycle was just the last 30 days was making $100,000 with PHP Agency. You know? $101,000 in a month. In a month. And you've only been with us for how long? Two, two and a half years? Two and a half years. It's a pretty nice place to be. You know? So to go from zero to 100000 a month in two and a half years is because purely it's around you. You're constantly feeding into us. You're constantly stretching our vision. Holding us accountable. I think what I was I was telling uh, last night I was hanging out with uh, Frank Baltierres, uh, Juan Maldonado, and Miguel Pineda. You know, uh, of course, you know, Juan is uh, progressing, and, yep. and uh, Miguel and Frank are, are, are brand new. This is one of the greatest benefits I have in business today, aligned with you, is that I have a CEO that's in the game and is thinking bigger all the time himself. And you're just not a peacetime CEO. 
you're a wartime CEO, right? And that's been, that's been my example. What happens somebody's out there right now, they're in a situation, they're, they're a company, that they, they want more out of the opportunity than somebody's feeding into them, what would, you, what would you suggest they do? So I would tell you the simple thing, it comes back down to the individual. You know, there, there is, uh, the individual can either say, I wanna be in a place that's safe and sound, and you know, a big company, I don't wanna be a, uh, to have too much pressure on me to go to a smaller company, help it become bigger, then that's what they need to be. And that's their decision. But then if most of these companies, when you read their history, you hear about at some point, they went to a smaller company and they helped it become bigger companies and then they became heroes. Okay. What's unfortunate is eventually they end up bashing others who think that way, it's a proven formula. I always said, I was saying this at a, a meeting last week with a bunch of investors. I was sitting down there, one of the guys was a $100 million guy, another guy manages a fund of $2.1 billion. And, you know, and I said, look, the one thing I can tell you about the life insurance industry, okay? <laughs> I'm in a meeting at Ritz Carlton, Chicago. Speaker gets up and he says, you guys keep asking about the insurance industry and what it looks like for the future. He says, look at the problem right now you guys have in the industry. He says, look around the room. It was 200 CEOs in the room that run their own FMOs. He says, what do you all, all of you guys have in common? Everybody just looking at it. He says, you guys are all white and you all are in your 60s. Mm. He says, and all of you during lunch, all you kept talking about is your golf handicap. No wonder you're not recruiting new people uh -huh. and growing the industry, right? So the way I looked at the industry, uh, you look at 99% of life insurance companies all the way at the top, all the executives are Caucasian, yet they want to go into multicultural. Right. All the executives are in their 60s, yet they want to recruit 25 year olds. You, you cannot relate to a 25 year old when you're 65 years old. No what connection. are you gonna do with that? There is no connection. Five years old. What Just getting good. Sadly, my phone had cut out. I think the uh, the power uh, was completely juiced out, and we attempted to put a power pack, and it didn't work. But anyway, I just want you guys to know the topic of this video is the one relationship that you do not want to burn, that you do not want to walk away from, which is somebody that constantly adds value to your life, that increases your standards and causes you to think bigger in your life. And I hope that you don't run away from a person like that. 
that person for Sheena and I has been Patrick Beth David. And for the last two and a half years, we've been here at PHP Agency. We've been building our own business. We're build, we're building our own offices, and we're just teaching on and passing and paying forward what he's giving to us. That we've completely evolved and have grown mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and obviously financially the last two and a half years. And if it can happen to us, it can happen to you. So I encourage you to look for a relationship in your life that causes you to grow in many, many different ways, but that causes you to think bigger increase your standards and to discover constantly the next best version of you thanks for tuning in make sure you like subscribe to our channel on youtube and that you comment and share this message with other entrepreneurs and to our veteran fellow entrepreneurs too well. until we meet again continue to smart continue to smart and be mighty smart today i've had a boss for 21 22 years i want to be the boss great we gave them the option you want to work for somebody else for comfort and, and you lack confidence of being able to go out there and do things on your own, or do you want to go under our wing?